news. Yep. Well, friends and neighbors, what do we have today but the One X Player? It's a gaming computer for hardcore gamers. Well, we'll be the judge of that. Yep. Enjoy my time anywhere at any time. I don't know what that means, but this is kind of a premium unboxing here. Oh, we have instructions. We have a charger. Okay. We have a, I don't know, gamepad. I guess that's the side controllers. And we have... Oh, oh, oh that's guys. Whew, that's chonky. Is that it? I think that's it. And we have the One X player. Take this candy wrapper off. Holy crap, that's thick. Goodness gracious. Look at that. Look at that. The main body of this is almost as thick as a 353V. How do you like that? And the winner is... I'm the manual. Don't throw me away. I won't. Hi, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. This is what I am look like, okay? This is a positive photo. This is the back of my brevity. This is all I look like. Come on and boot me on to check. Okay. I mean, I, I might throw it away. I don't care what that box said. Let's get the joysticks on. Now Stubbs, who defiled this beautiful handheld for a live stream, he is not crazy about these joysticks because they don't have magnets. They follow more of the, the Nintendo Switch design. How do they go in? Do they just click? Oh! <laughs> This thing is big. Wait a minute. So here's the One X player eh, next to the Steam Deck. Boy, those are both big fellas. The screen on this one dwarfs the Steam Deck. That's kind of neat. But that's that's what they look like side by side. The oh god, the One X player is significantly thicker and heavier. It's very heavy compared to the Steam Deck. Okay, let's whew, let's, let's let's turn it on. Hold this down for two seconds. Got a power light coming on. Ooh, that's beautiful. All right. So I'm going to do this setup off camera. I'm going to get Windows set up. I'm going to get Steam running, uh, Epic Game Store running, all my stuff running. I'm going to throw all my emulators, all my ROMs, get some games downloaded, and we'll be back in a little bit. Uh, before I finish setting this up, I will show you all the ports. We have these mappable buttons, X1 and X2. Now, right off the bat, they're not volume, but you can set them as the volume there's a turbo button sd card usb a usb c you have your l and r buttons oh those are loud analog triggers i like that uh, these are hall joysticks but they're just like little short switch sticks got a d-pad that actually it feels kind of low but it feels good i don't know if that makes sense like it's it's not proud from the case but it doesn't feel too bad. I got this button, don't know what it does. These two buttons, we're gonna find out. These buttons, I mean, there's gotta be a reason for them. And then we have X, Y, A, and B. These are decent sized buttons, not too bad. On the back, we have a kickstand, that's kinda neat. Well, let's try that. Oh, we also have these, what are these, quick release buttons to get the, yeah. Got quick release buttons to get the Joy-Cons off, excuse me side controllers so I can just set this down and type 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 with my keyboard pretty cool pretty cool so yeah get everything set up off camera and we'll be right back to you the viewer hello dee, 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 dee. not gonna spend a ton of time on anything below PlayStation 2 or GameCube but I did want to show you that if you really wanted in a vulgar display of your own power you could play Game Boy Advance games on here. Uh. Nailed it. I think. If you were so disposed, you could play Game Boy Advance on here. It actually takes up almost the entire screen, which is hilarious to me. But you can put, like, the most graphics-intensive shaders you could ever imagine on here, and you will have a very fun time. Overkill aside, we're going to move on to GameCube and up. So we got GameCube, PS2, Wii, 3DS, uh, Wii U, Switch, 
Uh, I don't know. PC games. Let's just go through them all. Steady, Zoo. Come on, Han. Where are you? Oh, oops. Oh. I think I broke the game. Oh well, even demanding GameCube games will play on here. 3X, 4X, probably 5X if you fiddle with the settings. I didn't touch a thing besides change the resolution. Obviously, you can dominate GameCube. I have PlayStation 2 here. I'm playing Beautiful Joe 2. Someone wanted me to play that. It's at 1080p, and it's beautiful. You could probably max it up past that to 4X, but, I mean, what's the point? And now we're going to try to do this stage. Ah, ha, ha, ha. First try. I totally didn't try that for the last hour. Yes. Totally first try. What are you going to do about it? Get wrecked, son. Uh-oh. I don't know how to beat these guys. Got to dodge and then kick. Oh, slow motion. Forgot that I had slow motion as, a, as an effective tool. Get wrecked. I broke your shield. I'm bad. Okay. So anyway, PlayStation 2 plays amazing on here at 3x, 4x, maybe 5x. Who knows? It's a powerful computer. It's a Ryzen 7 Gen 7840U graphics card on here, which means it'll play a lot of stuff. So I'm running 3DS on here at 4x resolution. It's always a little janky at the beginning when the textures load and the cache forms itself, but it runs really good at 4x resolution. And you could probably bump it up past 4x, but then you're getting to the point where you're sharper than the screen and it's like, what's the point? You're just burning extra power. Oh no, Lissa, watch out! Ha ha. You couldn't hit the healer. Crap. <gasps> you missed! Zoo, you turd! Crom will come save the day. So yeah, 3DS plays on here great. You can bump it 3X, 4X. I actually switched from 4X to 3X while I was filming because it was doing some weird, I don't know, smeary thing. But 3X, 4X, hire if you want if it's docked, but it'll run 3DS all day long. This thing plays Wii U amazingly. I really like it for the limited amount of Wii U games that I do actually play. But I mean, it's beautiful. You can set it to V-Sync. It doesn't use a ton of battery. And you can play games like Mario Kart 8 and just really enjoy yourself. I mean, just look look at how beautiful this is to play. And maybe if I could drive a little better, I'd be doing better. But wee! Man, this runs like a dream. Wii U on here seems like it runs a lot better than the lower end stuff, which is funny to me. I guess that's just a statement on how optimized this emulator is. Whee! Drive off the road. I mean, look at the fireworks. This thing hasn't dipped below 60 FPS the entire time. It hasn't, yikes, hasn't even thought of stuttering. Oh, here's the stupid ink. Easy peasy. This thing crushes Wii U, and I really like it for Wii U. This guy has really good PlayStation 3 performance as well. So we have NCAA Football 14 on here, and it runs really, really good. PlayStation 3 games run really good on here in general, but this game in particular, it has something weird with the audio. So I have turned off commentators. You'll still hear some stuttering with the crowd and the ambient football noise, but the commentators, for whatever reason in this game, just start to sound like this, and then it fixes itself, and then it breaks again, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. There is a way to fix it. I've seen different settings floating around. I just haven't really delved into the sub, sub, sub menus in here. But the game itself runs fine. Oh, okay. Whoop. 
I mean, I'll take it. Oh, no. Boo. That was paid off. Paid off. This game is rigged. You can hear the crowd audio starting to get weird, too. But then you pause. Goes away. And all you hear is the fan. Speaking of the fan, it'll get real loud if you're running a high-end AAA PC game. But otherwise, it's not too bad. And it keeps it relatively cool. Oh, cold onto the ball! Ooh! Oh, dead. But I mean, it'll run at between 60 and 30 FPS, and I'm pretty sure native on here was 30, so it's not like you're really noticing slowdown. It's really hard to commentate while playing the game. What do you think we should do, Gary? You want to run a screen? Power O, you traditionalist. Let's run it right up the gut. All right, everyone, settle down. Hoop, hoop, hoop. Get that tight end moving. You know what, Gary? That was really bad play call. They saw it coming. Bunch of jokers. Oh, jeez. I don't know how to kick in this game. Oh, jeez. Uh hmm. Okay, I guess I guess we're going for it. It's good. How about that? Now the fan's going to kick on playing some Switch games. This thing runs over 30. It'll go in between like 40 and 60. Once the cache is all loaded and all the shaders are loaded, it's really smooth. And this is just straight out of the box. I haven't, you know, adjusted or optimized anything. It's just out of the box. We'll see what it can do. The heck? I feel bad about killing these things. I mean, they're obviously sentient. Ah, crap! I don't feel bad anymore. Yeah! Yep, ta! Switch on here is pretty good. It's mostly emulator dependent, but you can play pretty much any Switch game you want on here, as long as you have a copy of your own that you legally purchased. We're gonna move on to PC next, but just remember, leave comments if there's something you wanna see me try in the emulation showcase video. Now for PC games, you could just go through Steam or Epic or whatever your launcher is. You also have this button up here. If you hold it down, it takes you to the One X Player custom software which has a front end. And so you have all your PC games in a nice little scraped front end type deal. So let's just start with some Spider-Man. I'm running this at 1200 by 800 resolution um, with a mixture of low to medium graphics. And I could bump the resolution and I could bump the graphics a little bit, but setting it at this 1200 by 800 resolution really locks you in at 60 frames per second for the most part. Go fight some bad guys. Rude.
240 points. It's my best combo ever. So obviously we're gonna play a bunch more PC games in the game showcase. I wanted to show you that even though it might not have been hitting 60 100% uh, of the time up here on the metrics, it plays incredibly smooth, it handles it easily, and you can have a ridiculous amount of fun. It's at this point, it almost feels like having a PS4 or a PS5 in your hands, which is, I mean, amazing. So, what did we learn? The One X Player 2 is an extremely powerful machine. It has a Ryzen 7 7840U chip. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM. It comes with, uh, well, this one at least, came with one terabyte onboard storage. It takes an SD card. I didn't even put an SD card in here, but you can extend your storage that way. Uh, it's extremely fast, extremely beefy. The ergonomics, for me at least, are pretty good. The, uh, let's see if I can turn that fan down. The ergonomics for me are really good. Some people don't like that the controllers detach. Um, I, I will say it's kind of a bummer that it didn't come with a uh, centralized piece so that I could take these off because this has a kickstand right? So you should be able to just put this up like that pop these guys off and do 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 but They want to charge extra for that. It didn't come with a carrying case Which is kind of a bummer too for the price they want you can get it for a little bit over a thousand dollars Around eleven hundred dollars with our coupon codes which we're gonna flash on the screen and have in the description but for that price point you think some of these things they would have just kind of chucked in there all that being said it's extremely powerful. I've actually used it for uh, video editing. It's faster than my laptop that I have been using for editing. So it's just really powerful. You can buy a wireless keyboard. I bought this one for like 10 bucks on Amazon just because it's the same size and it does the trick for what I need. There's lots of accessories you can get from Geek Buying. Thanks again, Geek Buying. Or you can get some other stuff on Amazon to kind of buttress what this comes with. I will say one of the main disadvantages of this is because it's so powerful and because it has this bright, beautiful screen, you can run at a pretty high brightness. It also gets pretty low for playing in bed. These LED controllers don't really help in the dark, but because it's powerful, because it has this massive display, battery life, not great. For the lower end emulation, you can lower your TDP, you know, down to four watts, 10 watts, 15 watts, and you can get hours and hours of gaming out of this. For your higher end stuff, your higher end emulation, like PS3, Switch, that sort of stuff, you really start to drain the battery. And then your AAA PC games, oh buddy, that battery's gonna go down. Uh, I think we lost 20% battery just playing Spider-Man for half hour or so. So if you are gonna use this for crazy, crazy, crazy high-end AAA gaming, you're gonna wanna have the cord nearby, or you're gonna wanna have one of these Gigundo power packs that'll output at 100 watts. So I wanted to keep this initial impressions video pretty short, pretty sweet. We only played one or two games in each category. Do let me know in the comments what you want to see me try for the game showcase. I will tell you for PC, I've been playing a couple tactics games on here. I have XCOM. I have that new-ish alien tactics game. I bought Robocop. Um, which was cool because I wasn't going to buy it because my PC wouldn't have been able to handle it. But I got it with the hope that this would run it. <laughs> it does a pretty good job. It's not perfect. Robocop's not optimized, but it runs really well in here. So I have some PC games picked out. But let me know which PS3 games or Xbox 360 if you want me to try or regular Xbox or, I don't know, Wii U, Switch, whatever. Let me know what games you want me to try. I'll probably be able to squeeze out more performance because I'll take more steps to optimize it as opposed to just throw the ROM on there and see what it can do. But yeah, let me know. Let me know in the comments what games you want me to play. Well, let, let me know what you think. Is this too much? It's very expensive. You can get yourself a really nice gaming laptop for the same price, but the gaming laptop, I don't know. There's something to be said about sliding these guys off, throwing that in your bag. Nice little compact tablet shape. Turn that off, throw it in your work bag, and take it in. It is really portable, and I've been having a blast with it. So I hope you like this video. Definitely let me know in the comments what you want me to try next. And uh, we will see you with some more One X Player 2 content. I really like this. This is kind of neat. I like this high-end x86 stuff. Do you guys? What do you think? All right, see you later.